Hello my fellow cigar smokers and welcome to Smokers Pod. It is the night owl again and we are smoking the Arturo Fuente from the Hemingway series. And that here is the work of art. A beautiful Perfecto Vitola. And as usual with a with a lot of Fuente cigars. Man, I don't know what they are doing, but they're probably fermenting the tobacco in a special kind of way. I'm always smelling like a very subtle cheese thing. <laughs> when, I, when I'm, when I'm, you know, it smells like, and I think it has, I'm pretty sure it has something to do with the fermentation. Um, and when I say cheese, it's not in a bad kind of way, uh, because when I'm smelling that specific aroma, most of the time I know it will be a damn good cigar. All right, guys, using my cigar pocket knife, let's open that bad boy up. Looking good. <sighs> Go draw something fresh. Like lemon. Interesting. So Arturo Fuente guys, you already know the Don Carlos Eye of the Shark is one of my favorite cigars and I think we were already covering that one in another Night Owl a couple of months ago. No doubt they are doing outstanding cigars. Very often, a little bit more on the pricey side. As with this here, I mean, it's a perfecto. Oh, ring gauge 53 at the biggest point here. And I think four to something inches long. And it's around, uh, I think, 1480 euros. It's around 16, 17 dollars. So. Is it worth it? Most of the time, yes. At least. Uh, in my humble opinion. Perfect draw. So what else is typical? Other than the cheese smell. <laughs> Is a double Fuente. Um, a lot of Fuente cigars. They are using a Cameroon wrapper. And also here. Cameroon wrapper, Dominican binder and filler. That's a special combination. And maybe that that sort of planting, mixing things, uh, is it that um, that makes it so popular? Very good smoke output. That specific smell I was talking about, it's really only only an aroma that is in the in the smell. I never had this uh, while smoking a Fuente cigar. Some very mild coffee notes along with something grassy. Hey, grass, 
like this. As usual, my friends brought something to drink. Garrison Picky Blinders um, decanter. And in there is a Lafroig quarter cask. Let's drink one together. Cheers, my friends. Lafroig, very smoky, peaty, intense. Not a whiskey for like every night. But from time to time, really like that one. At the moment, there is the European Championship and the Soccer European Championship going on here and they're playing it actually it's the it's the uh, 2020 championship they just like delayed it due to Corona and so they're playing it now and they're playing it all across Europe in Germany France and a lot of other places Not a big soccer fan. Never really was. Probably never will be one. From time to time I'm watching a game. Uh, especially when the championships. Uh, no matter if it's still like the World Bowl or the European uh, thing going on. Um, but yesterday something happened that like caught my attention Denmark was playing against I don't even know <laughs> it doesn't matter for the uh, for the thing I want to talk about and during the game uh, something happened a player collapsed uh, and uh, they need to reanimate um, him and uh, then rush to the hospital. By now, I don't, I don't know um, how he's doing. Um, well, my point is, you know, it was a life game. Oh, he collapsed. Not quite sure why exactly, but I don't want to talk about soccer or health things at all. I want to talk about let's let's say compassion and decency. Why? Uh, as I said, it was a life game, you know, and I mean, of course, all the cameras then was on this guy right spot on and I thought man that's it just wasn't feeling right then after a while um, 
other players were like forming a circle around him so that the camera couldn't see what's going on uh, and everything and well that was a good sign that I mean like the other players like cared not only about uh, his health but also uh, that like that that all cameras were on him right So after a couple of minutes they rushed through to to the hospital and then the I don't even know who exactly but they they decided to uh, start the game again and that also man I mean, you're playing soccer, and then all of a sudden, one of your buddies like collapsing on the field, and there's a possibility that he's going to die. And you, like a couple of minutes later, you just keep on playing like there's nothing. As I said, man, it's it just it didn't feel right. Like, I mean, the messages most important thing is the game we don't care about all the other things the most important thing is the game and why not because they all want to play because it's money it's all money you know every fucking minute counts that was the impression I had that was the feeling I had and that just like supported my 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 feeling that like that sort of professional sport is it just it has no compassion no decency let's let's put it this way like in the 80s or 90s we have one soccer club here in Frankfurt uh, we have more but the one I want to talk about is Eintracht Frankfurt that's the biggest soccer club we have here and they have a long tradition like over 100 years in existence and, and so on and so on strong fan base and everything around so in the 80s I was still watching soccer played myself a little bit but really just like on the uh, uh, like on the yard you know somewhere with my buddies never really not even close to be professional you know as a kid and at that point I was also still watching a soccer on TV but after a couple of years when I was grown older and realized what is it all about? I, for me, I decided I don't want to follow that. I don't want to follow soccer any longer. Because really, it's just about the money. And now, you can say like, of course it's about the money. Because they're all professionals. They're earning their money with it. And I have absolutely no problem with that. But if it comes to a point where money dictates who will win championships, it has nothing to do with like sportsmanship for me, you know. We have this one we have this if you're not familiar with, with soccer or with German soccer, we have this one team here and that's from Munich, Bayern München, right? And I mean like they winning every year the national championship every fucking year you know I mean like every five or six years someone else but I mean that's like exception of the rule right and why they are win because they are the richest club you know they can they can spend a whole lot of money on, on good players that they are buying from all around the world you know
So what does that mean? That means that the club with the, with the most money will win the most championships or will win the most games and will be the most popular and so on and so on. And so what about the sport, right? I mean, two teams playing against each other, trying to win in a fair game. What's all about that, you know? Um, anyways, guys, that's... That's why I stopped watching soccer on TV. Because I realized, okay, it's all about the money. And that thing today was just like, oh man, really? This guy's almost dying here on the field and you just keep on playing. I mean, not like instantly, but... <sighs> What do you guys think? I mean, is that I am too like over critical about that, or is that something? Um, I mean, what what about like let's say NBA, NFL, uh, MLB, all that? You know, I know it's also all about the money. Um, but you know the difference is that professional American sports. No matter what it's like, for example, let's let's take the NBA, right? Every year they have this draft, you know, and the the the, the club who's the like who who had the at the you cannot really compare it because you know there's not like uh, when you're the last in your division, you like you like losing. You have to go to the uh, like the second league, you know. I know there, it's it's a, that is the way it is uh, with soccer in Germany. Uh, so you cannot really compare it one hundred percent. But the fact is that taking all the teams in the NBA, the one team that had the bad uh, the the worst uh, statistics, like they were losing most of the games and they're not doing very good, they have to like the first pick. And what does that mean, like? Over time, it it should be the way that it's like. Uh, even you're not like the best team, you have a chance to getting better because you have the first pick. In German soccer or in soccer in general, that's not the way it is. You know, you're just buying players from all around the world. You know, I think there is something like a cap. Uh, what amount you? don't know allowed to spend in one season or whatever you know but it's it's just not the same good cigar now it's 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 a small vitola, right? So that night I will probably will not be that long <laughs> today, but um, I think definitely worth smoking it. Now after like fifteen minutes smoking, there's something like it's a very creamy experience. And there's like roasted peanuts or something like this. Something that is on one hand very like... Maybe spicy is the, is the wrong word. But if you have that roasted salted peanut thing, you know, you have that... That... You know what I'm talking about. That special flavor. And then you have that roasted coffee sweetness thing. Good combination. you have a nice solid white ash I mean you still even can see like 
how the Vitola was originally looking like, you know. Great. On the other hand, maybe you know that my view on like professional sports, in this case soccer, maybe it has something to do with back then as I was a kid and watching soccer you have you're like naive right you don't think about all the background things that are going on you're just enjoying watching the game or playing the game and maybe that has something to do with getting older getting more experience uh, um, making like your own failures and learning and you know all that stuff maybe that's just something that happens automatically I don't know but it bothers me you know it's maybe that's something that will never happen but wouldn't it be cool if like uh, the game wouldn't be a little bit more fair but but that's probably like wishful thinking. A couple of days ago, I talking about Arturo Fuente, I had a good opportunity and was buying a box of Arturo Fuente Chateau Sirius, the Queen Bee. Haven't had that smoke in, I don't know, two or three years. And I was looking through different cigars in one of my favorite online retailers and then I just stumbled over this uh, Fuente, Ch uh, Fuente Chateau uh, series and they were just like I don't know you know it was in a newsletter or somewhere but uh, I just it caught my attention that okay the, the Queen Bee is available again so I instantly like bought a box and now it's sitting in my humido for a couple of days and I think next week or so it will be ready to to getting smoked Dropped the ash. But I mean, that is just like. I mean, now it's crumbling a little bit. But that's, that's just the perfect ash. Really. Love it. we passed to 500 subscribers crazy i think on the last video or um, that before that already the the like the first uh first people already like congratulated on uh reaching the 500 thanks a lot my friends that that's like <laughs> that's like insane we're we're now climbing climbing up very fast I uh, love that and we also like established a couple of new subscribers that are also active and subs and uh, commenting and so on really cool and then one thing happened um, that I want to talk about go 
or one of the new subscribers. And frankly, I don't even know if he's a subscriber, but let's say a person who I've never read something before in the comment section. And it was on one of the older uh, reviews, like from, don't know, first quarter last year or so. Not, uh, anyways, it was an older video, right? And he commented. And it was obviously a cigar that I back then didn't like so much. Uh, and obviously, uh, I I didn't watch it again. I didn't watch it again. But obviously, I said something like, "Okay, the first impression is not so good." Blah blah blah. Anyways, the comment he made was like. Maybe your first impression would have been better if you were like using uh, a wooden match. And I wonder if there's something else other than wooden matches. And yeah, it, maybe your first impression would have been better if you're using a wooden match and not inhaling at all. Just puff it. Just like let it burn alone and then start smoking. Mm. <laughs> like, I don't know how to light a cigar. That was my first thought, but let me continue. So I was reading that, and my first thought was, okay, do you think I don't know how to light a cigar? Or why are you telling me that? Uh, but then after a couple of minutes, I thought, Jesus, why I'm so, why I'm upset about that? Because there's someone, obviously, watching your videos, enjoying it, and just trying to help you. You know, uh, if that was like the first video he watched, he has absolutely no idea if I'm like a rookie, if I'm new into smoking cigars or whatsoever, and it was just a good advice, right? Uh, so after a couple of minutes, I was coming down and, and thought, okay, man, it was just like, it's a nice guy, right? He's just telling you what, he's giving you one idea why the cigar uh, was so bad. And then on the other hand, it's sometimes like when people are asking me or if I'm watching something and I think something's going on there, I'm also giving like uh, unwanted advice, right? Not so often, but from time to time, if I see something and I think that's terribly wrong, not saying that I'm always right, then I'm like also commenting, you know? And so there's the same thing over here. And maybe he just watched like one with vi this video uh, specifically uh, and nothing else. So that's absolutely fine. My friend, if you, uh, I'm, I forgot the name, anyhow. If you're watching right now, thanks a lot for your advice. I know how to light a cigar. Uh, and I'm pretty sure my first impression was not uh, because I lighted the cigar in a, in a, in a weird way. Uh, my, my opinion about a cigar uh, is based not only on like the first couple of puffs after lighting, but a lot of other things are like flowing into that um, opinion. And after that, it's just an opinion, right? That's my opinion about a cigar. Because sometimes I have the feeling that, let's say, that Arturo Fuente here. It's an excellent cigar. But just let's assume it would be a bad cigar, right? For me. I'm smoking it, I'm getting flavors out of it that I don't like and whatever, you know, and I'm saying, oh man, that cigar sucks uh, because it's bitter and uh, construction is shitty and all that, you know. And what happens very often, then you have fans of that brand or that specific cigar and they like start defending that cigar. And frankly, I never got to that really because, I mean, why? 
you know it's not like that at Hugo Fuente or someone else needs like uh, knights out there defending their um, uh, their their cigars the quality of cigars or whatever you know they can do that pretty much themselves they're big enough um, <clears throat> what I want to say is very often that happens but what I really want to say is it's, it's just an opinion you know I'm smoking a cigar and for whatever reason I think it's not it's not for me you know and then of course when it's a, like a review I'm just saying for me it's a bad cigar because ABC you know but as again just my opinion maybe you're smoking that cigar and you're liking exactly that flavors or whatever and for you it's just a damn fantastic cigar and that's absolutely fine you know I mean it would be horrible if everybody's like uh, liking the same cigars Oh, you're almost at the band now. That was quick. I threw off went to doing great cigars. Other than that, really not a whole lot happened that week. Uh, I was, I think I already talked about the, um, uh, that the lockdown is over. I mean, not 100% over, but now most of the things you can do again here in Germany, and that's that's great. So uh, I visited the, the lounge in the David flagship store almost every day. And I think we can, like next week or so, I will start recording in the lounge again uh, maybe not every episode uh, but more frequently now now that it's open again but I think it will really need some time that like getting back to normal whatever normal means you know but for example, the last couple of times I was in the lounge, like last week, it was, one day was like packed, but all the other days there were like one person, two persons, so it's, I think people still, <sighs> excuse me, oh Jesus Christ, <laughs> uh, I think people need to get used again to like coming together, you know. There was an interesting documentation or I don't know like a talk show or whatever and there were a couple of smart people uh, talking about a phenomenon called they they calling it uh, FOMU F-O-M-U fear of meeting up and I heard that and I thought, what, what the fuck are they talking about and then then I saw it like where they're coming from there's like a term for more in like stock and trading and so on um, it's like the fear of missing something you know you see like uh, price up again and you think oh well, I, I missed that and now I need to uh, get into that uh, that thing and then all of a sudden you're losing money you know uh, and I think they like um, taking that FOMO thing and like we we invented it to FOMU now and I think I think at one point that's like that's true because I spoke with a couple of buddies and we agreed on that like we had locked down I don't know like 16 months or so and of course there were no big gatherings or whatever and I don't know I think you're not really coming out of that lockdown and be like the most stupid person in the world just because of the lockdown uh, but I think you need to getting used to again to like socializing you know 
with with other people with big groups because you weren't doing that for the last 16 months so you need to get like warming up and um, uh, getting used to people again I don't know if that is, is true uh, for me personally I don't have that problem uh, last couple of days I was spending like every day downtown lounge cafe whatever you know and for me it was like I was just like fucking happy that everything is opened up again and I'm able to do what I want to do you know so but I definitely understand that other people like they are cautious uh, so we'll see how it develops As I said, it will not be one of the longest night owls we've ever made because cigar it's slowly coming to an end. Well, last week we had a real unicorn on Friday that was that Cohiba 35 Anniversario fantastic cigar fantastic review I liked the feedback and everything and I was really happy to smoke that cigar um, and sometimes I think um, sometimes I think it's hard to getting better all the time or maybe not better but like creative with some things so we had that, remember, we had that Cuban Davidoff, that Dom Perignon, and it was like, for me personally, was like sensational, you know. And now we have this 20-year-old Cohiba 35 and the worst Anniversario, and I was saying, okay, what's next? I mean, here we go, you had like, fucking great cigars. Um, I was just like, for a second, I was thinking about that. I think, okay, man, people are not watching it because I'm smoking that unicorns. They probably like it uh, and watching it and everything else. But I think people are here for a different reason, you know. And I think the numbers, like, they're proving me right. It will just be interesting to see what's going on in the next couple of weeks and months. Uh, see where we are heading to. great cigar guys okay this time only like 40 minutes but I hope you enjoyed it I enjoyed it the cigar like talking to you guys drinking something talking about well mostly it was soccer today and that also I'm not a soccer fan <laughs> so but uh, it was cool all right guys thanks for watching uh, I hope you can smoke a great cigar uh, and enjoy it, um, enjoy life. Most importantly, stay safe and stay healthy. Um, and I hope to see you around a smoker spot. Cheers and good night. Mm.